hear the silent minds We're working on the LT1 Hear the silent minds I don't want to work no more I swear this car was cursed forever I pray to God Feel the silent minds Feel the silent minds Feel the silent minds Don't be a parts changer! Don't be a parts Don't changer. Don't be a parts 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 changer. Hey Fearless Mods fans, what is up? It's Biff, and you're back for another episode. This time, brought to you from Turks and Caicos. We have found our way to the islands because we finally figured out what is wrong with this Pontiac Trans Am. It has been more than 10 years, and we're gonna walk you through it. You interested? Stay tuned. Are we gonna finally solve the mystery behind our lack of power in this 1994 Pontiac Trans Am. I don't know if you're a betting person, I'd say no, but let's give it a shot. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I feel like this thing may not be breathing the way it should be. Um, so I am suspecting the catalytic converter could potentially be plugged. That would explain why I can't get above 2500 RPM, why I can't accelerate above 20 to 30 miles an hour and might explain the rattling that I'm hearing in the exhaust um, that is becoming more and more pronounced. So I'm gonna start up and just see if it feels like we have any, um, how much air is actually coming out of these exhaust pipes. At idle, I wouldn't expect to feel a whole lot anyway. I don't feel a lot. Come here assistant. So on the first check, um, it certainly does feel like it's blowing out air pretty good. Um, whenever we're at 2,000, 2,500 RPMs, it's actually revving really good today, which it has not been doing when I've had everything hooked up to it. Maybe we take it for one more test drive real quick before we um, decide to go ahead and get underneath it and start unhooking things. Help her get on up in there into the driver's seat. All right, went for the test drive. And even though it was revving good initially, now it's not. I'm still limited to just below 3,000 RPMs. Um, getting the rattle again. Feels like it is under the passenger floorboard where that catalytic would be. Uh, let's see what it feels like now when we go to the floor. All right, Ryan, to the floor, buddy. Yeah. Yep. All right. All right. Okay, so um, we do have airflow coming out. If it is the appropriate amount, I don't know, but next thing we're gonna do is let this cool down and get under there and check out that catalytic. Here's our catalytic. Um, our pipes come down one piece from the headers all the way down to the catalytic converter. And then from there, we do have a flange here. That's why a lot of the exhaust systems are capped back. And then we come back and we go into the muffler and then out of the muffler, it splits up into the duals. 
So I have this flange on here and a split in the exhaust. So I think my first plan is going to be to take this off and then we will run it and make sure that whether it's the catalytic that's causing the restriction to the uh, exhaust or whether it is the muffler. If that doesn't work, I think our next best bet is to undo the six bolts at the exhaust manifolds so that we can then give it another run check and see if we have eliminated it and hopefully it takes care of it. Fingers crossed, we need this. We are ready for full on exhaust test. It's not the muffler. So next step is going to be to drop the headers and make this puppy really loud. I initially did get to 4,000 RPMs, but you could hear it probably um, very loudly back here that it rapidly worked its way back down to 3,000 and then I couldn't rev it over 3,000. That's enough gap. <laughs> As you break it down. Right? We are completely dropped. So this should be very, very loud. Man, I am beyond ecstatic. This thing seems to be working perfectly with that unhooked. I'm gonna give you a couple more views. This is fantastic news. All right, well, let's go look at some Borla exhaust or something. I've wanted to do it since I bought this thing in 94, and maybe now it's time. All right, so we got the catalytic converter out, and there is a lot of silver substance coming out through the front end, and this is gonna be hard to tell here. It's all loose and rattly in there, so, who knows how much of that has come back here and plugged this section of pipe. Um, I do have a scope, so why don't we see if we can get in there and take a look. Don't seem to see a lot of pieces, and it's certainly not plugged. We're all the way up to the back of the catalytic converter, so there's nothing plugging that pipe. So on this side, I was able to get in all the way to here, which means I was up to this point. What I'm gonna do next is just see if I can smash out some of what's in here uh, and see if we can dump it out. There's, oh, more, there's more coming out. Let me get something better to get something better to stab it that way. Ah, uh, yeah. All melty. This is where our problems have been. What I've shown you here is an example of what not to do, but you can see how the residue and stuff that has built up on these and just the sheer melting that has occurred in here. These are blobs. There is no air making it through the honeycombs, at least not the way that it should have and the way that it was back in the beginning. So there is just residue on top of everything and who knows what causes that, but this car is a 94. So it is uh, 28 years old and this was definitely part of our problem. Probably the major part of the problem. There's also appears to be this little bit of like fiber in there and we didn't get very many big sheets of that out. So that probably means it had disintegrated and plugged up as well and maybe that's what some of this was that contributed to that. I've cleared out the catalytic converter. Um, again, not the emissions approved way to do this, 
But what this will allow me to do is go ahead and now install this back in and we will be able to drive it and verify without sounding like a race car that uh, we have solved the problem before we go just buy a whole new exhaust system. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that tailpipe piece. I'm going to go ahead and put it up against here, kind of get it semi bolted in so I can put a mark across there so I know where to weld it. And then I'll drop it down and give myself a little bit more room to try to go ahead and weld that whole seam instead of using that clamp that's been on there for years. All right, our pipe's welded good in the back. Looks like we'll fit up on here okay. So we'll go ahead and get this bolted in, put our cross member back up, and we should be ready to rock and roll. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we are all set. My hair may not be, but this car is clear. All right, here we go. Test drive. Well, Fearless Mods fans, F-Body, Pony Car fans, LT1 Trans Am and Camaro fans, man, this smile on my face is just, I, I, it won't go away. She's ripping all over like a, I don't know, like a, a hell-struck wolfhound, man. I don't know, it's just, it's got get up and go, and it feels fantastic, running perfectly. There are chemical additives you can put in fuel tanks to try to clean up catalytic converters, but that's not gonna work on something like this. You saw how melted it was. Um, there was nothing that was gonna solve that problem. I had essentially a catalytic plug in this car that was preventing it from breathing, and I had to open it up. There was no other way to do that. From a diagnosis, figuring it out, and solving a problem, check man, we finally did it. We finally got there, she's fixed. I don't know, I was just sitting around editing that last video and looking at the live run and listening to the car and I just couldn't get it out of my head that I kept saying it was missing horribly, but I couldn't see the miss in any of the data. Couldn't get over a certain mile per hour, couldn't get over a certain RPM, um, misfiring, rattling in the exhaust. I had all the symptoms on that last test drive that really pushed me over the edge and made me start to think outside of my typical ignition problem lanes. And so I don't need a PCM. I don't need an OptiSpark. Everything else I've replaced has probably been unnecessary, um, but boy, we learned a lot along the way and now we have a perfectly functioning car that I don't have to go pay anybody else to do all this diagnosis for me because we did it right here in Fearless Mods. Who would have ever thought that this stuff in my catalytic converter would have been the problem the entire time. It was broken and melted and plugged and it got worse with heat and time and now it's gone. So we have finally solved the problem. That's why I'm in paradise. Thanks for watching Fearless Mods. Please remember to like and subscribe and we'll catch you again in the next one. Take care.